What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Just made it back home. We got a little problem with the uh, Volvo here with the leveling valve on the rear suspension. Uh, got to feeling a vibration and it started out the last load I carried and it was uh, driveline vibration. It took me a little bit to figure out what was going on and uh, I got out and looked and noticed that the uh, suspension was a little higher than it should have been and uh, so I bent the leveling valve rod around there uh, in order to kind of compensate for it a little bit to help it out. Let's see if I can show you that over there. This rod right here is supposed to be straight. Well, I bent it in order to shorten it thinking it would, might would help it out uh, till I could you know figure out what was going on with it and uh, it did help out shortly but then the leveling valve uh, completely failed and now the rod is unhooked and pulled down you can move it up and down and the leveling valve will not exhaust any air out of the bags so it has the bags fully inflated here and it does not operate very good that way to say the least and I am surprised that I did not blow an airbag out uh, you can see I mean it's got those axles pushed all the way down and the only thing that's holding it is the the uh, the shocks here the shocks is the only thing that's holding the uh, the axles back at this point and uh, so that is uh, something I got to get taken care of here because as I say it's not how it's supposed to be and uh, it appears that we have bent the top shop shock brackets on this front axle here but uh, we made it home as the the shocks touching the leaf down there because this is twisted forward that's the only thing holding us an awful lot of pressure on those uh, i think i looked at my suspension gauge it was showing 110 or 112 pounds of uh air in those at one point and empty with the trailer connected should be about 12 to 14 and with the trailer disconnected probably should only have about eight in them uh, so they're way way overfilled and as i say I disconnected the leveling valve rod and moved it up and down and uh, it just won't exhaust any air out it keeps adding air but it won't exhaust any and I'm uh, probably not gonna be able to film changing this thing I'll see if I can show you where it where it is up in here for those of you who do not know but uh, it's kind of a pain to get to right there because the way all those air lines run across the top of it but you can see that that arm right here that's swung down and uh, it's got a rod attaching to it with that valve right there is on a little bracket and it's completely covered with nasty greasy filthy everything that slings off all this stuff and uh, so you pretty much when you change one of those you get covered with uh, everything but uh, I think it's only got two or three bolts that hold it on and then uh, your air lines that go in there. It's just uh, one of those nasty, filthy jobs. But I'm not sure if anybody else has ever run into this. I'm, I know a bunch of owner operators has, but uh, I'm sure somebody's seen this, one of these do this before. Most of the time those valves just start leaking externally and they'll, uh, you'll just have a big air leak, but they'll still function to your ride height but uh that's not the case on this one and i actually had to lock the uh lock the power divider in which locks your differentials together because with all four bags pushing down your suspension is so stiff that one axle when you go over bump uh one axle is picking the whole back of the truck up so your other axle comes off the ground and it just sits there and spins the tires uh, so I had to lock the power divider in and I drove it 300 and some miles with a power divider locked in to make it home uh, To keep traction because as I say when you go over a bump or something One of the tire one of the axles come off the ground. So anyway, that's never good and uh, the driveline vibration is because It's got Such angle tires off the ground there now as you can see You see what I'm talking about why you've got to lock the power divider <laughs> was not expecting that like to fail so all the weights basically on this axle and this one here is uh off the ground so 
So, I mean, it's, it's like being on ice. You can't go anywhere. This one here is a little bit of weight on it, not much. But uh, you can check out the drive line angle there, the U-joint angle, and see why there's a vibration. I did not get in a big hurry at all coming home. Uh, I stayed less than 60 miles an hour, and, and most of the time I was only running probably 50, 52. Uh, but I did get up when I got on the interstate 60 or so, but uh, didn't really get any faster than that. Because didn't want to throw the drive shaft out or damage anything too badly. But anyway, I just wanted to do this quick little video. I'm not going to mess with this, I don't believe, tonight. I've got a, uh, a new valve ordered that will be in tomorrow. So, it is two days later. Uh, I got my valve in yesterday. It was late when UPS run. I was expecting to be here by dinner or shortly after. And I got here at like 10 minutes till 5 or something like that. And so, uh, it was too late for me to worry about any loads anyway. So, I didn't even worry about it. Uh, so, I'm up this morning. And uh, I've got this thing opened up. It does not look like... It's worth 300 bucks to me, or it's actually $329 with tax and everything on it. But anyway, uh, the guy was like, oh, it comes with fittings at that price. Oh yeah, I see, It's and that's real nice. It's like freaking 10 bucks worth of fittings. But uh, nonetheless, I got it. I haven't opened the instructions uh, to figure all that out. But while I was waiting on it to come in yesterday, I got up under here and got to looking around, just checking things out. Uh, and you see that oil on the floor down there? That's coming out of the rear differential right there. And uh, what has happened is the vibration, the driveline vibration from this ride height being off like this, that's why I wasn't getting in a hurry coming home because I could feel the vibration. I was trying not to sling drive shaft out or something. But uh, it's caused the pinion nut yoke on the front differential on the output of the front that goes to the rear uh, it's caused that pinion nut to come loose and the yoke is loose and so you can move it up and down and it's leaking oil out of it. So uh, I've got to pull this rear drive shaft out as well and uh, fix that. And I'm not going to be able to get up under here and film. This thing is so nasty and uh, I can't, you can't really see up under here. It's not very much light. But uh, that's what I got going on. We'll pull this rear drive shaft out. We'll finally get some rain as you can hear. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this put on. I don't know if I'll need these fittings. Uh, I think these things, I think they changed the design of them or something a little bit. Uh, so I'll have to look at this and see what's up and, and if uh, maybe it's already got the newer design valve on it. Uh, and all I'll have to do is plug it in, I hope. But if not, I'll have to uh, figure out what's going on here and tap these lines and, and do whatever the instructions say. But it's just two bolts that hold this on and then your rod here. Uh, and then I'll have to bend the... Uh, the rod that goes down to the frame that I bent the other day, I'll have to uh, get it back and take it off and I'll straighten it back out to where the ride height will be correct. So anyway, I'm going to get started on this. I'll be back with y'all in a little bit. Alright guys, I've got the old one off. It looks identical to it, to the new one there that I got. And uh, so it looks like it's going to be a plug and play deal. I just cut the lines off of there. Because that's the easiest way to uh, remove it. Got four lines, two on each end. And uh, I'll take that rod off and straighten that S. I put in it out when I was trying to make it home. And uh, that's, I mean, this is not a real hard job. It's just hard to get to. You see where the bolts are down there. Uh, and you have to reach your arm all up in here. And then your head sticking right here in this pile of grease off the fifth wheel. And everything back here has grease on it. And this is the, uh, the yoke right here that I'm going to pull this rear drive shaft out. And uh, the nut is loose on this yoke. You can see in the floor down there probably where it's, uh, the oil is leaking out of it. So that's what I gotta do after I get this on there. So uh, it's nothing but two nuts that hold the, uh, the valve on there. And then just a matter of hooking the airlines back up. All right guys, I got the valve back on there and uh, I've got shop air going to the truck right now and got it turned on, letting the truck air up and I don't have this rod installed yet. I'll have to straighten that out. I'm gonna leave it off till I get the pinion uh, issue corrected, the nut back tight and the drive shaft back in because this rod will be in the way anyway. But uh, one of these, I didn't use any of the kit here to install it with. I just put the valve on there and uh, cut these hoses off. One of them's a little bit short, but I got it plugged in. I think it's good. 
Uh, I'm going to check it for leaks. I should be able to go around here and move this valve once it gets some air built up enough and uh, move this valve up and down. It should pick the truck up and down if everything's functioning correctly. So uh, we'll go over here and uh, do that real quick. All right, so I'm going to stick my hand down in here and you see the bags are deflated there. And I should be able to pick this up. It should pick the truck up. And you see she's a coming up. You can see that there. And this should put it back down. Let me go to that mode. That's exhausting right there. It doesn't exhaust very fast though. She is coming back down. It takes it a little bit to level out, but uh, that's what this valve is supposed to do. When it's centered right there, it is uh, it holds a position. When the suspension compresses, it pushes the rod up. So even the least little bit, it's supposed to add air and pick up. If you shorten the rod, which is what I try to do uh, to make it let down when the valve was malfunctioning the other day, uh, you know, it shouldn't take but a little bit and it should start coming back down. And uh, you can hear the air escaping out of the valve right there, so. That seems to be working. You can see how much it changes this U-joint angle right here too. When these bags are airing all the way up. That makes a huge difference. So we're gonna let it settle back down here some and get more in the position it's supposed to be and then i'm going to pull this rear drive shaft out here and uh tighten this old pinion nut up down in here i'm going to pull the nut off and uh, most of these things have a washer behind the nut pull the washer out clean everything inside of there up with brake clean it's not leaking at the seal it's leaking uh out of the nut between the splines and the yoke and uh so i'm gonna clean that splines and the yoke up with uh brake clean Put a little silicone on the washer, push the washer in there, clean the nut up and the, uh, and the threads, put red Loctite on the nut, torque it back down. And uh, I'm going to check the rest of the drive shaft bolts and stuff as well. Because uh, anytime you get a vibration like that, uh, you can go figure that you're going to have something that's not happy and start loosening up and uh, can sling the drive shaft out and whatnot. So uh, anyway, let me hop to that. All right, I got the uh, rear shaft loose here on the back side of the front differential. I'm gonna try to show you this movement here, see if you can pick it up. See, I'm wiggling that, and you see the oil starting to run behind the nut there. The, uh, the, the strap bolts here were plenty tight. I had to heat them. They were Loctited in, so they were still good, but uh, I'm going to uh, take the impact wrench, pull this nut off, like I say, clean that up a little bit better and uh, silicone on the washer, Loctite on the nut, torque it back down. Boy, I just love working on a greasy old big truck. Just nothing I'd rather do, really. Uh, anyway, I've got the uh, level valve and everything back on there. I got the drive shaft back in. Uh, I'm not sure this old level valve, it could have been just a piece of trash hung in it, but I don't really know. I wanted to get a new one because I don't know how old this one is. And if you take it apart and uh, then you don't have a new one on hand and you can't get it put back together and everything then uh, you're gonna miss another load waiting on a valve so anyway I think I made the right call on that hopefully it will work out I'm gonna take you under here and show you the uh, the way you're supposed to adjust this uh, leveling valve on these Volvos I've got the rod straightened back out as you can see where it don't have a kink in it no more but if you got these holes down here, and this is for this stud to go in, and you can move it around all of, uh, I think there's five holes here, and uh, that will change your rod height uh, on your uh, suspension there by 
just moving this. But when you're on the side of the road and uh, you're laying under your greasy truck, you do what you got to do. If that means bending the rod, you bend the rod, right? So got all that uh, put back on there, tightened back up. Everything's got Loctite on it. I'm going to go over the rest of the drive shaft bolts while I have it in here and uh, take a look at that and make sure that everything is uh, tight as it should be. And then we're going to get this piece of junk moved out of here and hooked back up to the trailer so that we will be ready to uh, pick up a load when I get one. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up and uh, check those bolts. And then I'm going to go get cleaned up and get this grease off of me. So uh, thanks for watching. Hit like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you like this sort of stuff, we'll see you guys in the next video.